Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Great to see you here, spaced out, but the church is honestly full. This is about our capacity at every third pew, and there are people down in the fellowship hall, so greetings downstairs. And of course, greetings to those listening in remotely, listening from home and all the different ways in which you can do that. Remember, we are alive in Christ, together or apart. And we're going to continue emphasizing that. There's all kinds of ways to trust in God's presence, Christ's gift to us as the living church, wherever we're at. Today, a Sunday school lesson will be embedded into worship. We're just going to take it that way. After trying a couple of different runs at different methods, this still is reliable only because, parents, you know that in the middle of worship every Sunday, and you can find it on our website, beavervalleylutheran.org. You can go to YouTube and simply type in Beaver Valley Lutheran. All kinds of ways to get to a good recording of worship, but in the middle of worship, your children's Spark Bible Sunday school lesson. So Mary Lee, thank you for being the teacher here in a few minutes this morning. After worship, our semi Uh, annual meeting of the congregation and and a big part of that always is the election of church council members and so want to thank the five who have stepped up so far offering themselves as church council members to be considered we're electing four there are some lines on that ballot if you prayerfully consider it this morning and wish to have your name added we will be asking for further nominations at the meeting uh, today tonight From 5 to 7, I'll be with my ninth graders, spread out in the fellowship hall, but it's time. We're working on our faith statements as we head towards October 25th confirmation service. They'll have their own service, not 9.30 like normal, but at 11 o'clock, just the 12 confirmands, their families and friends coming, so we have enough space to spread out in in the congregation and in the pews to make that happen. And then senior high at 7 o'clock, we're going to talk about our Pine Ridge immersion trip next June. We're trusting on going. The money's been sent. We're holding the week. I'm hearing good interest. That's 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, all eligible. I'll be calling some households this afternoon, and we're going to make sure we have a good gathering. It won't, the meeting will not go on and on tonight, but our main focus is that. And then a little preliminary talk about youth group youth group heading into the fall and winter. Tuesday, First Communion. Normally that's fifth graders, but there may be others of differing ages that are older, maybe some sixth graders that I'm not aware of, that can come on Tuesday evening for First Communion class. Let's agree on the time here, can we? That is 645, 645, not 7, 645, First Communion class. Wednesday, it's our last outdoor worship of the season. We went past summer. It's just getting dark. We're going to call the 14th our last outdoor pavilion Wednesday night. However, we are moving to Sunday morning outdoor worship out in the pavilion, 830 chapel, Sunday mornings. And I don't know if anybody's willing to put on a pot of coffee. There's no reason we can't have somebody with gloves on and a mask sitting there Hitting, the, hitting that handle just so that everybody's not touching the same coffee pot handle uh, and have a cup of coffee outdoors. Outdoors is where we will stay for that. So you can either stay after the 8.30 chapel or come early for the 9.30 worship. It's just going to be coffee, just a pot of coffee on out back and keeping it really simple as we ease back in to some fellowship time. Thursday, women of the church. The Gather Bible Study. I work hard at it. I hope it's a blessing. I think the few that have been getting on are, are thinking of it as a good experience. I would ask that you pay attention to the Thursday push from the church office. Uh, Carrie always puts a nice little simple email out Tuesdays and Thursdays. In that Thursday push will be your Zoom call. It's a Zoom meeting. So click on that and there's a little pass, passcode, just a little set of numbers. You type that in and you're into the Zoom call. So I would, you don't need to gather magazine. Uh, You just need your Bible open and join in. And I I really hope we can expand the numbers, especially as we head into the winter and need some things to do uh, as we're going to be spaced out for a while. Two more little items. Looking for a laptop. If anybody has a used laptop, what I need is a camera for all the zooming I'm doing. 
and I need one at the church. The church does not have a camera on any of its computers. So uh, if you happen to have a laptop that's not being used, otherwise they're not that expensive, we're going to move ahead and get one. But just in case someone would have one to donate, we'd appreciate that. Also, another announcement that um, Dan Feakin is uh, resigning as our custodian after five years and part of staff appreciation today will be an extra loud round of applause for Dan and Luke, who really teamed up and did a nice job of keeping our building in good shape and clean and so a word of thanks, but also a word of announcement. One more week here before we start interviews. We have two candidates so far for custodian. And uh, just to let you know that other um, applications are, of course, welcome. So just to put the word out there as formal as we can be with that. Any other announcements this morning? I hope you have your little salmon-colored sheet handy. Yeah, we're going to do a little, little, just hope, have a little fun with this during the very opening minute of my sermon. Uh, we're going to sing a little bit of this old song I remember from my vacation Bible school days down in Vermilion, South Dakota, over in Prentice Park. And uh, so, have that handy, and uh, it's a take-home sheet for you with a little devotion from Alvin Ragnus on the backside. Any other announcements? Any other announcements this morning? Well, good to have you here in worship. Please stand as we head into worship with our invocation. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Please join with me in the responsive call to worship. You've been invited to a special feast. This is celebration of commitment between God and God's people. Your response is noted. There are many others who would be delighted to come, even on a last-minute notice. God looks forward to getting them and celebrating with them. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, We Are Called, hymn 720.
prayer of the day is before us. Let us pray this prayer together. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25. After a hymn of praise acknowledging God as a shelter for the poor, the prophet portrays a wonderful victory banquet at which death, which in ancient Canaan was depicted as a monster swallowing up everyone, the monster will be swallowed up forever. The prophet urges celebration of this victory of salvation. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you, I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made us the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow and well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading is from the book of Philippians chapter 4. Though writing from prison and facing an uncertain future, Paul calls on the Philippians to rejoice and give thanks to God no matter what the circumstance. God's peace is with us and binds us together our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, especially when things around us do not seem peaceful. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Eodia and I urge Sintichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, Help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, 
whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Here ends the second reading. And I'll move down for a children's sermon. If, you, if there's any kids here and you have a spark Bible, you can get that out. Now in the Spark Bible, for the kids at home who are watching, we are on page 304. It says, the wedding banquet, and there's a picture of a king there, and a picture of a lot of happy faces, and somebody playing a flute. It looks like a party to me. Hmm, I wonder if they're having a party. We'll have to read the story and find out. Now you can read along, parents and kids at home. I've kind of written up a little something here about what I got from the story. Today's Bible story is a parable that Jesus told. It was about a king who was very excited that his son would be getting married. He wanted to share his joy with others. So he decided to have a huge celebration. He would have a party with food and music and dancing and games and fun for all. Have you ever been invited to a party? Well, I made a little party invitation here. Looks like this. Have you ever gotten one of those to go to a party? And then on the inside, this particular party says you are invited. Come have fun and learn about God. And like every invitation, it says where. I feel in Beaver Valley Lutheran Church. Good place to have a party. And it says when. On Sundays, Sunday mornings, time, 9.30, and it says, bring a friend. Now on the other page, it says RSVP. When you get an invitation, you're supposed to respond to it, right? And say whether you can come to the party or not. The host goes to a lot of work to throw a party, and they'd kind of appreciate a response from you. Now back to the story, it says, Sometimes you get an invitation on a phone or a text message and you can respond that way. But in Jesus' time, there was no phones. So the king who was having this party sent out his servants to go out and invite all of his friends. But instead of accepting the invitation and attending this marvelous party, his friends said, oh no, I'm too busy. They came up with one excuse after another that they couldn't come. And when they went back and told the king this, he was really quite upset. And he sent his servants out again. And he said, invite everyone and anyone. Ask them to come celebrate with me. He would went to all this work preparing everything for the party. And he wanted to make everything special just for those people. <clears throat> so the king decided that he would invite everyone and every, anyone to come to this party. And you know what? They accepted, and they did have a good time. They had a wonderful party. It just wasn't with the people he had expected to come. When you get an invitation, you respond to that invite and sometimes you might make excuses. 
Some of the excuses I thought up were like this. Oh, I'm too busy to spend time at that party. My time's valuable. Or maybe I don't want to spend money on a gift. I don't want to go to a party because I have to bring a gift. Or I'll spend my time doing something more fun just for me, not for somebody else. Hmm, I wonder if that sounds like good excuses. But you need to make a response. And if you get an invitation like this one, this Bible here is an invitation. If you read through a lot of the stories, Old Testament, New Testament, there's tons of invitations for everybody in there. So if you think of your Bible as an invitation to learn and to come, and you can enjoy learning, you can have a good time, and you know what? It's going to make your life a little bit better. I think Jesus was trying to tell people that God was the king in this story. God wants us to celebrate with him and his son Jesus. He even sent us an invitation so remember what it is. It's your Bible. And if we never even open our Bible or take the time to learn about the gift that God has for us, we'll miss out on a wonderful life of celebration and God's love. The Bible tells us over and over again that God and his son Jesus are inviting us to join the family of believers. The Bible tells so many stories about how to live a life of kindness, caring for and respecting others, and the joy you can find by thinking of others before yourself. It tells us how we can have meaning and a purpose for our lives. If we open God's invitation and accept his invite, then we will have the love and knowledge that we need to go out and invite others to celebrate God's love with us. Now that we've learned more about this story, I want to find some time this I want you to find some time this week to make an invitation for somebody. You should say that they are invited to come to a party where you celebrate God's love. I made this one and it's got the date and the time and where you could make your say any place. It doesn't necessarily have to be Beaver Valley. You can make a, a party anywhere you go. And the activities would include opening the invitation, the Bible, and learning all about how God has prepared a celebration of love for everyone and anyone. Who will I give this invitation to? I don't know yet, but I think God will clue me in about someone who might need it. Thanks for listening. And we're going to just keep talking about that very theme, kids of all ages here now. So thanks, Mary. Appreciate that. Yeah, and you can get your orange sheets out if you have them. Just a little prep here as I'm getting ready, trying to kind of keep it all straight here for my own self. It is the reading from the gospel today that is the basis for my message as well as the children's message this morning. It does come from the gospel of Matthew as we continue in Matthew this year. Matthew 22, verses 1 through 10. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I've prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away. One to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. 
Go therefore into the main streets and invite everybody you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all, all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear God, help us to let go, slow down, so that your voice, your calling, convinces us to come and discover at your table a feast of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Mary's already hit on some of this in a nice way, you know. I think it's easy just to kind of, once in a while, just blow an invitation off. So my confession is I did it twice this week. There you go. Now you know what kind of a pastor you've got. <laughs> First time, I was invited to two Zoom meetings at the same time. Well, so I get a pass on that. There's only one of me. So I just had to pick which one I was going to be on and let the other one go. But then later in the week, there was another invite to a Zoom meeting, and I wasn't a leader, uh, just kind of going to sit in and listen in, kind of more of an inf informational meeting, and I thought, God, i got other things, and what a busy set of weeks ahead, and well, maybe I better just get on to other things instead of that Zoom call. So I didn't join. Later in the day, I thought, I wonder what they talked about. <laughs> What did I miss? Maybe I should have been on it, you know? You just kind of get rolling, and, and I don't know. I still don't know if it was the right thing to do or not, but I did it. Well, today's gospel, do I dare call it famous? I think most of us will have at least heard it a time or two in our lives. The king is putting on quite the wedding banquet, and it's emphasized in that he not only killed an oxen, that wasn't enough food. Also a couple of calves. And then you're ready. That's just a big, big gathering of a lot of people. And then you heard the story, I can't come, I can't come, all of the excuses. Oh, I learned this song. Let's grab your sheets and you've got to help me. We're not going to sing it all. I did sing it all on Wednesday night in the pavilion. It went on and on. I won't do that to you. But at the top is the refrain. Then we'll sing verse 1. And then we'll sing the refrain again, and then I'll just stop there. But at least it gives you a little feel for this song that I know I learned way, way, way back in my vermilion years as a child uh, for our two-week vacation Bible school back then. And um, it really, it really kind of gets us thinking maybe about our own excuses. That's what we'll talk about later on. Let's just try this. Whoopsie, there we go. I cannot come to the banquet, don't trouble me now. I have married a wife, I have bought me a cow. I have fields and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold the excuse, I cannot come. A certain man held a feast on his fine estate in town. He laid a festive table and he wore a wedding gown. He sent invitations to his friends far and wide. But when the meal was ready, each one of them replied, I cannot come. I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now. I have married a wife. I have bought me a cow. I have fields and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold the excuse, I cannot come. And you can take the song home with you. He gets angry and he sends his servants out and he finds more. And in the end, it's, it's a great party, but it's too bad some people missed it. So what are your excuses to what extent are they like mine? And I do remember as a child learning that song. It always bothered me that people didn't make it. I always wondered, why didn't they come? When you knew the feast would be just incredible. Why? A, a king's party. This isn't, you know, this isn't a Greg party kind of McDonald's party. This is a king's feast. This is a... This is a king's celebration. Why didn't they come? Well, as a child, I didn't understand it. As an adult, I do. I do understand it. 
Life's really, really busy. And it's easy to get caught up in your own stuff so much that you might miss people around you. And you might easily, often enough, miss the voice of God coming to you in the simplest of ways. Harry Chapin wrote, I think, what may be the saddest song I have ever heard. You've heard these words before, I think. Just a few of the key lines from this famous song. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. And he was talking, for I knew it. And as he grew, he said, I'm going to be like you, Dad. I'm going to be like you. My son turned 10 the other day. He said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's go play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. Not today. I have stuff to do today. Well, my son came home from college just the other day, so much like a man. I just had to say, son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? He shook his head, no. He said with a smile, what I really like, Dad, is the car keys. Can I have them, please? I've long since retired and my son's moved away. I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad. If I could find the time. You see, my new job's a hassle and the kids have the flu, but it's sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's sure been nice talking to you. And I hung up the phone and it occurred to me. He'd grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. <laughs> so it was my brother Eric calling me. Years ago, busy. I was so busy at tea, I couldn't even see myself coming or going. Not once, not twice, but three different times. He was up from Nebraska and wanted to get together. Wanted to, my younger brother, by almost 11 years, wanted to be with his big brother, and I just couldn't. I just didn't have time. And he said to me, you know, you remind me of that guy in that song, The Cat's Cradle. And it didn't really hit me till later what he really was saying, how much he wanted me to be a brother. And I just didn't have the time for him. To slow down, you hear the voice that says, you're everything to me. I love you and want to spend time with you. It's the voice of a, a brother to a brother. It's the voice of a boy. It's the voice of a dad. It's a human voice for sure. But at the heart of it all, it's really God's voice. In the end, it's really God's voice. We are precious to God. We are the elected ones. On the back of your orange sheet, you'll go home with a simple but nice devotion written by Elvin Rognes, entitled, We're the Elected. Listen, he says, there is infinite comfort in the assurance that we're the called ones, the elected ones. On this fallen planet, we are the new Israel, called to suffer and to triumph as God's people. The call is to everyone the world over. Those who respond are now with vocation to live as God's people. Think about your life and the daily word that comes to every one of us to baptize. It's there if we're quiet. If we start the day with some time with God, we will hear that voice. Greg Wilcox, a good friend of mine, has just retired now from being the senior pastor at the Good Samaritan Society. And I had a chance to watch a little of the video of his farewell uh, event at Good Sam. Very subdued, of course. There's very few people in that big building. But what I remember about Greg is his incredible discipline to start his day about five in the morning for an hour or two of reading and prayer and devotion. And I asked him where he found that and how could you be so organized and get up that early? And, and he said, you know, I just, don't want to miss the, I just don't want to miss the voice. It was his way, his very disciplined way of saying, I don't want to miss the invitation. I don't want to be so busy that I can't get fed so I could go and do all the things he was called to do. Well, you see, it's that way. We are the elected. We are the ones who the king wants to come to the banquet. It is that way. The parable is urgent 
2 in this way. The banquet table is set, the love of God is sure, and our God, our King, our Father can't make us stop. God cannot make us stop. We have that kind of freedom. We kind of have that thing. We're not puppets on a string. We are called in relationship which we can say yes to or in the end we can say no to. I'll say it again. The love of God is sure. It will never, ever go away. And God, our King, our Father, can't make us stop. Oh, but the blessings are there if we will. And here you are. You're here to hear that word. This is the banquet. This is the place where we're fed of food so we can go out and not be crushed by all that stuff out there. To be strong and see the beauty in the day. That's the good news for God's people. Amen. And so we sing, will you come and follow me? Please note the verses, hymn verses 1, 3, and 5, hymn 798. Congregation, please stand. If you join in the profession of faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed are before us this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And again, thank you for your offerings as you come in or leave the sanctuary, those that are mailed in, those who are giving online. All of that is so much appreciated as we move this ministry forward into the last quarter of our year. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear God, the invitation is a great invitation. Every morning you invite us to eat at the table called grace. Forgive us when we're too busy to hear your voice and trust in you more than ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, tomorrow is Native American Day. Both red and white children are of your making. 
Help us to keep working at healing a broken history. Help us to grow in our appreciation of one another. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for those who struggle mentally and spiritually. These are difficult times in which many are feeling separated and lonely. We pray that we would double our efforts at looking around and who needs a phone call and who needs a card in the mail. Help us, dear God, be those children that send an invitation. Come and sit in my driveway with me. I just want to be with you. I just want you to know you matter to me. Dear God, that can make the difference between life and death. Dear God, we also pray for those who are battling physical challenges. We continue to pray for those publicly who request prayer. Beulah Parkinson, Jordan Ramazani, continue to pray for Tim Joris, Keith Barr, Haley Hines, Don Graff, Maya Kiefer, Don Johnson, David Arnott, David Burnt, Lynn Bonander, Art Odlin, Lowell Richards, Don Nolte, Terry Pluger, Sheila Grime, Dan Steen, Mason Beck, Sharon Wendell, Linda Dolly, Ingrid Briggle, now home from the hospital, and all of those who we lift up before you now. Lord, in your mercy. And dear God, we pray for Lowell and Mary Johnson upon the death of Mary's sister, Virginia Hilden. We pray that you would bless all those who are grieving her loss. Remind us as you send your Holy Spirit to intercede that this life is just the beginning. Lord, in your mercy. And dear God, we pray for our youth. Ninth graders meeting tonight, working on their faith statements, senior high youth later in the evening. Continue to bless the next generation of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We have worshipped in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 standing for our closing hymn and remember that uh, we head straight downstairs and after just a brief little time for staff appreciation we'll head right into our semi-annual meeting i hope you can stay we have plenty here for a quorum but we can't all leave <laughs> so hope you can stay for this important uh, brief little chapter each year in our church's uh, formation we sing sent forth by god's blessing all the verses <laughs>
Go in peace. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Whoops. 